Hello, hackers. Today we're going to be talking about format strings and format string vulnerabilities. Now, format string vulnerabilities exist in a number of functions, but the function that we're going to look at today is printf, which is kind of the common case uh, that is used when discussing these type of vulnerabilities. So how does printf work? Well, printf can take a variable number of arguments. The first argument is considered a format string. Now you could just pass printf with a string like printf hello, and this would display hello to standard out. But printf is typically used with some additional arguments. And these additional arguments are the values that you want to be formatted and kind of substituted in the format string. So if we look at the second example here, we have hello percent s name. Now name should be, in this case, a string. So let's say it's Pwn College. The result of calling printf percent s name would be hello Pwn College. And printf is going to substitute that percent shorthand of percent s with the string value that is name. In the third example, uh, we see that we can substitute things that are not just strings, but even uh, integer values or floats, right? So there are percent %d lights, 5. This is going to take the integer 5, convert it to the number 5 as a string, and then substitute that in for percent %d. Now, printf can do this for multiple values, which is what we see in the fourth example. Uh, the average of percent %d, percent %d, and percent %d is percent %f. Uh, the first three argu additional arguments passed in are integers, and the fourth argument is, in fact, a float and printf will take care of formatting these distinct data types and inserting them into the string in the appropriate location. And th this is a very handy thing to have. But how does printf know how many arguments there should be? Well, printf just blindly trusts the format string, that initial argument. So what happens if the user controls the format string value? We could have an arbitrary number of these percent shorthands and things could get a little, little out of hand. So the format string determines what arguments printf is expecting, but where are these arguments located? If printf can take an arbitrary number of arguments, does it follow the same standard calling convention that we already know? In these examples, everything kind of lines up, right? We have printf hello percent %s and we give it one argument name, which is a string. But what happens if we say, hello, percent s, percent s, percent s, and we keep passing percent s. Eventually, we're going to run out of registers, right? And if, if we don't pass enough arguments to the function, it's still going to have to try and find that value, right? It's going to have to find something to substitute percent s with. And so to kind of make sense of this, we have to look a little bit deeper than the C code. And so we're going to take a look at the assembly here when we do call printf because there is in fact a different calling convention than what we are used to. We should be familiar with the standard calling convention of uh, RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, R9. But what happens if we need to have more values to substitute into the format string? Where are these values located? It turns out it's on the stack. Let's take a look. All right, to explore this, what we're going to do is we're going to make a C file and we're going to call printf and then take a look at it uh, in GDB to see what is going on under the hood. So we'll include standard io.h, which is necessary to uh, call printf. Uh, we'll do a kind of a standard main function here with argc and argv. We're going to call printf on seven integers. And we will just name the integers is it, A through G. And we will make each one of them slightly higher number and we'll pass each one of them to printf. So we would expect to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's compile this and run it. 
We do see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but we have some kind of garbage here at the end. And that is because we are not ending this with a new line. And so if we do that again, uh, now it is clean and we see one through seven as expected. So what's happening under the hood? If we open this up in GDB, we can disassemble the main function. And we want to take a look at where, how are these arguments set up before we go into printf. And we see printf is called right here. So we'll set a breakpoint at main plus 115. We run it. Let's take a look at what's in the registers. Now, based upon our kind of existing knowledge of calling conventions, uh, we would expect um, RDI to be the format string. And we see that RDI looks like an address. So let's examine the string at that address. And we do in fact see the format string located there. Now the remaining arguments, uh, A through G, uh, if we follow through calling conventions, we see RSI is one, RDX is two, RCX is three, R8 is four, R9 is five. Now where are the six and seven, the F and G values that are passed in here via printf? Well, if we take a look at what is on the stack, uh, we'll see that RSP points to six and then RSP plus eight uh, is seven. All right. And so that is where printf is getting these values from. Now we used integers uh, because that was kind of a, an easy thing to identify when we're looking at uh, what's in a register or what's sitting in memory, but it doesn't have to all be integers, right? printf can take a variety of data types as long as you specify it correctly in the format string. So if we give it a char star, we give it the name Pwn College, uh, we'll add a percent %s followed by a new line, and we pass that in right there as the next argument. So we would expect to see one through seven, a new line followed by Pwn College. And that is in fact what we see. And what goes on in GDB? Set the breakpoint right before printf is called. We run it. And let's take a look at what is on the stack. Well, this is a string value, so the ASCII characters themselves aren't located here. This is a pointer to the string. So we can examine the string that is at that address, and now we see Pwn College. And this kind of introduces one of the interesting things about printf is so far I've specified everything correctly. In some of the you know next videos, we'll explore what happens if the type that is passed doesn't match the type that is specified in the format string. So it's surprisingly not that uncommon for the user to have control uh, of the format string that is then passed to printf. It's a pretty common mistake, uh, especially when you consider scenarios where memory corruption may be at play. And by abusing these format strings, uh, we can leak and even control memory. Now, this right here is all that it takes for a format string vulnerability to exist. The only requirement is that the user has control of that first argument to printf, that format string. Now, you'll note that there are no additional values or arguments being passed to this printf, and that's because printf actually doesn't care. Printf just blindly trusts that for every percent %d, there'll be an integer. For every percent %s, there'll be a string. And if we don't specify it in, in the C, printf is just going to go and check the register or check the location on the stack, right? And just assume that the value is there and interpret it uh, as it was intended from the format string. And that's where the vulnerability lies. Interestingly, printf is Turing complete uh, when it's in a while loop. Uh, this project here by Hexhive is an implementation of BrainFuck that runs on top of a printf while loop. Uh, definitely an interesting thing if you have time, go check it out.